Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash and all of the rest of the DC TV shows. Today we're going to be talking about the new renewals for our show, so that's very, very exciting. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So, yeah, the CW just announced that they've renewed literally all of their shows. I think there's two new shows that haven't premiered yet plus Superman and Lois that they haven't renewed. However, we'll get to Superman and Lois later in this video, but for now, wow. Super exciting news, always exciting when they announce what shows have been renewed, and yeah, pretty much as expected, and some as perhaps not expected, which is kind of interesting. So we're gonna be going through the article that was released via Variety, and so Mark Pedowitz actually gave an interview, you know, there's some quotes in this article, so we're going to be breaking it all down. So this is how it goes, the CW is renewing 12 of its scripted series, including an early season 2 pickup for its freshman drama, Walker, starring Jared Pilecki, from Supernatural. The other shows on the CW's renewal list are, and we're only going to be talking about the DC TV shows, but I guess one other one of importance is Riverdale for season 6, because Riverdale is good and I kind of like it. So, yeah, that's season six. And then in terms of the DC TV shows, we've got Batwoman coming back for season three with Javicia Leslie. So they obviously really liked her and they're really kind of pushing on for, you know, more Batwoman seasons and that comes as no surprise. Then you've got The Flash for season eight, which isn't a surprise, but kind of nice to know because it is, you know, running into its later seasons. So it's always like every year is the Flash going to get renewed or what, like of course the CW wants it to continue onwards but you know, do the cast want to continue? And it's amazing to see that they've agreed and they want to stay on. And then also DC's Legends of Tomorrow coming back for season 7. So we'll get to Legends in a minute but let's continue down this article. So freshman shows including Kung Fu and The Republic of Sarah were not among the early renewals though both shows have yet to premiere on the broadcaster. And in addition, the CW has ordered five additional episodes for season one of Walker, so that brings it up to 18 episodes, whereas Superman and Lois has been ordered two extra episodes. Now Superman and Lois season one is going to be 15 episodes. So yeah, Superman and Lois, that means that yes, it hasn't been renewed for season two yet, but they haven't renewed any of the other shows that haven't premiered yet. So I think they're going to wait until later in the year because you have to remember these renewals are early renewals. But it's really good news and it's nice to see that they're adding extra episodes onto Superman Lois. I kind of predicted that they would do it because 13 episodes seems very short for a normal DC TV show because they like to have longer episode counts generally, although Legends and Black Lightning don't typically have that much. So 15 episodes I think is like a good mix between all of this. And so let's continue now, Mark Pedowitz says this, Though we're just a few weeks into the new season, we wanted to get a strategic head start on the next season with these early renewals, which allows our production teams to start laying out story arcs and hiring staff, and at the same time continues to prove us with a strong, stable schedule to build on for next season. Well, he said provide us, not prove us, sorry about that. So Mark Pedowitz said that, he's the CEO and chairman of the CW, and so he goes on to say, as the CW's 2020 to 2021 season kicks into high gear, we are thrilled creatively with the direction of our new shows out of the gate, like Walker and Superman and Lois, that we wanted to provide and add extra additional episodes to complete their first seasons and we are particularly pleased with the huge success of Walker's premiere. So that's about it for the article, so yeah, let's go ahead and break this down. So what Mark Pedowitz says is, yes, we are renewing them and we're very happy with the creative direction behind Superman and Lois, but they are literally just waiting for it to premiere and to see the actual response, the audience response, if there is, you know, more of a response that they want to make more seasons and I'm literally 100% sure that they're going to renew it for season 2, so I was kind of surprised when I didn't see that it was renewed straight away, however it hasn't premiered so that does kind of make sense and I guess they just want to get a gauge of how popular the show might get, 
and so they're very happy with it and that's really good to see and like I said good that they added a few more episodes on top of its 13 episode normal count but I think for me the most exciting thing definitely is the renewals of the shows that were already on so Batwoman season 3 that means they're very happy with Jafisia that's amazing to see because I've really liked her and I would be very disappointed if Batwoman didn't continue so I think season 3 is a very very good idea but Legends of Tomorrow is interesting because for the longest time when anyone's like what CWD CTV show is going to end the soonest everyone is like Legends of Tomorrow but then again Legends is going on to season 7. I remember when Legends wasn't even a show and I remember when Legends literally came out of nowhere and you know it started premiering in January and then it kind of took over and became like a main show. And yes, it's a very different show from when it started and, you know, up until season 3 and then season 4 went in a completely different direction and I don't particularly like where they've gone with it because, you know, I think they've kind of lost track of what made the show interesting, like a kind of team-up show, but now it's turned into this kind of wacky comedy. And so that's just my own opinion, but it's very impressive that Legends of Tomorrow has gone up to season 7. Like, that is a long way. They are literally reaching arrow numbers. Well, the Flash is at arrow numbers now and is going to be hitting that very soon. So I guess with Legends, I'm actually not that surprised because it always gets renewed. However, it does go against people's thoughts. But the most exciting thing is, of course, that the Flash is renewed for season eight. So a while ago, I think at the start of the pandemic, Grant Gustin came out, he did this interview and he talked about like they were in conversations before everything shut down and stuff kind of slowed down because people were kind of adjusting to this new kind of world situation and so they were in talks and he mentioned like he wanted to go up to like season 9, 10, something like that. He actually dropped season 9 as a natural number so it does seem like Grant is totally down to stay on and I will be curious to see if in season 8 do any of the main cast members leave because that is kind of a trend, like you saw that on Arrow, like Emily Bet Ricards, one of the main characters who played Felicity, actually left. So is something like that going to happen? But it does seem like the Flash cast is very committed. So I'm actually kind of doubting it, apart from maybe Carlos might go because he's dipped out a couple of times, doing a few less episodes here and there. Potentially Danielle Panabaker. However, it has to be said that the Flash cast are really, really committed and they are very very active on social media promoting the shows and that's a good sign that they are gonna stick around so I think it's just a matter of like is the flash cast gonna stick around and then the flash will continue onwards so I think Grant will actually stick around until he wants to and of course the CW isn't going to end the show whilst they've still got Grant and the main cast members still around so for this reason that's why it's exciting because Season 8, they are on their way to reaching Arrow numbers and that means the show has been running for over 8 years and I guess as the seasons and years go by it's kind of more up in the air because shows don't tend to go on past like season 10 or something unless you're a show like Supernatural and you know the few rare shows that do that because people want to move on and that is the main reason why The Flash will probably end sometime not that soon but relatively soon, it's not going to go on for like 10 more seasons or something like that, although I would love it to. So now, what could happen in The Flash Season 8? So they have a lot of stories and obviously they take from the comics. There are a lot of recent really good storylines like Flash War in Rebirth and then like they're doing Future State and different stuff like that. So they can introduce characters that have been recently introduced, like there is a new Flash in the comics. So there is a lot that they can do. But I think what they might do in Season 8 is go back to more how it was before. So I'm talking about Speedster villains and everything like that. It could be Cobalt Blue, that has been someone that we've been speculating for a long time. Red Death, people have been waiting for it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Season 8 is like. But for now, get excited for The Flash Season 7 because they just released a trailer the other day. I've done two videos on the trailers, so they're my last two videos, so go check them out if you haven't checked them out already. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like and a comment if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe and turn on notifications if you are new to not miss any videos. But anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.
I see red.